Welcome back. In this relatively short chapter, we'll learn about the power of socket.io that solves a fundamental problem for us. So far, using all the tools that we've seen, we are unable to accomplish one thing, pushing notifications to the client. Everything we've done has required the client to request something from the server first, and then the server to deliver an answer. What happens if you want to create a chat app where you need to deliver a new message as soon as you receive it on the server, but the client hasn't requested an update yet? Or what happens if you are playing a browser-based game and need to deliver an event to the user in, form, in the form of a notification? Well, without Socket.io, this is not possible. Socket.io is only one of many frameworks that solves this problem for us, but it is the most powerful and the most simple. As you can see on your screen, it really is a matter of eight lines of code is all you need to get started with Socket.io, and it's relatively easy to understand. It's also used by a lot of big players such as Microsoft Office, Trello, and others you may have heard of, which means it's a well-trusted and well-respected framework. In the next video, we'll learn how to use Socket.io to push a basic notification to the client, and then in the mini project at the end, we'll create our own chat server where you'll have an opportunity to practice the skills you've learned. See you in the next video. Welcome back. In this video, we'll learn how to use Socket.io to send and receive messages to clients. One important thing to note about Socket.io is it requires JavaScript code on the back end and on the front end. So if you're developing a full stack web app, you'll need to refer to the Socket.io documentation yourself to learn about the front end part. Since this is a back end course, we'll only focus on the back end component. So the first thing we need to do is start up an express app like normal. So we will do const express is equal to require express and then const app new express like so. And then we've created our app. Now, also uniquely for socket.io, we need the HTTP module, which we usually don't have to deal with with express. But for socket.io, we do need it. So we're going to require HTTP. And the next step is to create a HTTP handler, which gets the HTTP part of the server. So to do that, we'll get const HTTP server is equal to HTTP.server. And then we pass in the app. And this gets us a handler to HTTP server. And now finally, we can import socket IO Don't forget you need to install the express and socket.io modules if you're following along at home. And now finally, we can get our IO handler, which is const IO is equal to require, is it, sorry, not equal to require, it's equal to socket IO like that. So now with all through with all of this code, we finally got a handler to socket.io. Okay. The next part is when we get a connection from the client. So we do io.on a connection from the client. Then we get a we get a callback function that gives us a handler to the socket. And now we know a client's connected. If we were in a chat room and we wanted to notify someone had joined, that we could use this function to do so. So here we could just say console.log someone connected. And in here, we can get events. So the way we get events is when we do use the socket handler we got. So we do socket.on and then say, I don't know, a, a, a custom a custom event. So a, a socket can choose to emit an event with any name. So let's give an example here. Maybe if we're doing a chat, chat, for example, we say new message or just message. So the client has sent us a message. Then we get a callback function with a handler to the message. And for now, we're not focused on individual users. So all we're going to do for now is show you two functions. One's called io.emit. And io.emit, we could say admit a message to everybody and then pass in the message parameter. And that would send the current chat message to all connected clients connected to the server. However, this is a bit cumbersome because you don't really want to send the message that someone sent back to them, do you? 
So to avoid doing this, you can do socket.broadcast.emit, and socket is a handler to the current socket, remember? So this will send the message to everybody but the client who sent it. Now, which one you want to use is up to you because sometimes you might want to send this as an acknowledgement that the message was actually sent back to the client, or sometimes you might not want to do that. So you can just do socket.broadcast.emit like that. And this is how you send a basic message with socket.io. On screen here, you can see the address to the socket.io website, and it's got documentation here. So if you want to learn any more about it for now, then you can do, but I will give you enough hints to solve the mini project I'll set you in the next video, so you shouldn't need to. Well, we'll create our basic chat app and then we'll extend it from there in subsequent chapters. See you in the next video.